Welcome, everyone, to another edition of the Snyder Cut Debates. Once again, I'm your host, Manu, and I'm here with two huge Snyder fans who are ready to go head-to-head to defend their positions. Uh, this week's episode, we have none other than JD himself, the man from Deaf Justice. How you doing, my friend? What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? Yeah, man. Doing well. How about yourself, bro? It's good to have you back on. We've done a, mm-hmm. we've done a round table together. Yes, sir. So uh, I'm, I'm really happy to have you on here, especially since you're going to be going up against my little brother, my main man, <laughs> Salazar. How you doing tonight, bro? Uh, well, it's not tonight, but yeah. Oh, uh, you know what I mean, man. You, know what? <laughs> the, you can see the sun right behind you. Yes, uh, you can. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Well, I'm doing good, man. I can't wait to get started. Awesome, awesome. So today's debate topic is going to be, who is better, the DCEU Batman played by none other than Ben Affleck or DCEU Superman played by Henry Cavill? Uh, So Sal today will be defending uh, the great Henry Cavill Superman while JD will be defending none other than the Batfleck. Uh, So uh, this is not our first rodeo, so uh, I'm just going to go over the rules one more time. Uh, Each of you will have three minutes to give your initial opening statements as to why you feel the way you do about your position, followed by a two-minute rebuttal of your opponent's position, and then finally one last minute to defend your position. Finally, you will have a 30-second closing statement where you will try to talk to me, the host, and try to sway me. And I will tell you right now, gentlemen, I am not easily swayed. So I want you guys to come out full fire all the way through, no holding back, no holds barred. This is like a WWE, no, like, you know, you know, no rules match. So I want you guys to go at each other as hard as you can. So hold on. Let me get, let me get my clock sorted out right now. And we uh, performed the coin toss before we got started and JD won and uh, he chose Sal to go first. So Salazar. Mm -hmm. You're going to get us started, and you're going to tell us in three minutes why DCEU Superman is go. starting now. All right. So, uh, like Manu said, DCEU Superman is the GOAT. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Um, Zack Snyder has put this character at the pinnacle of the DCEU. Um, he's starting off with Man of Steel, where uh, we see this character go from birth to the eventual becoming of his character uh, of Superman. And we see that he uh, can change many of his adversaries in the franchise to becoming a better version of themselves. So you have Pete Ross, you have Colonel Hardy, and eventually you have Batman himself. All these characters that this character comes across and they become the better version of themselves just because of the way he is not because of some uh, cool speech or anything. It is just the things that he does. Um, And this character is uh, completely refreshing in our modern day storytelling. Like I just said, he doesn't have these cool speeches. He just does what he does. He says what he uh, means and means what he says. And um, unlike another character we're gonna talk about, he, he didn't hide for 20 years in the shadows. He doesn't uh, beat people senselessly as a brute force. Um, And uh, like I said, he's led all of these people to come out of the shadows, whereas another character has just completely um, had an inward and more selfish crusade um, in his his crusade, I guess you could say. Uh, You said I had 90 seconds? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, Zack Snyder has related this character to so much mythology uh, where we have in Man of Steel you have like Plato's Republic and then in uh, Batman v Superman there's like Greek stuff there's stuff from uh, the Wizard of Oz and all this relation to different types of mythology to elevate and put this character on a higher pedestal than your average um, than your average caped superhero out there uh, Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 45 seconds left. 45 seconds. Uh, and uh, like I said earlier, um, uh, the fuck it. I'll take a stab at Batman then. Uh, <laughs> Batman, uh, Batman uh, his crusade is much more inward and selfish. He goes out beating people to a bloody pulp just because his parents died one day. 
uh, a Superman's parents died, and he's been going out there saving people, being a better self, seconds. making people be a better version of themselves. Uh, and Batman ain't done shit except give some uh, <laughs> grimy dude some uh, some Five cool uh, metal teeth. That's all Batman's done. <laughs> All right, all right, not bad, not bad. I I appreciate the approach there. You nice, know, nice, nice one, I, I really nice appreciate one. that. Uh, nice JD, one. you let him go first, and he put that blast on you right real quick. So it's up okay. to you now. So okay. you have three minutes to state your your reasoning and your thinking as to why DCEU Batman is better. Starting now. All right, so we're gonna start with you know Bruce Wayne, Batman, Ben Affleck. Some of you call him Batfleck. The man, the myth, the legend, you know what I'm talking about? Like you heard, you know, Sal gave some repertoire about Superman, whatever with that. Let's go on with Batman. <laughs> so let me tell y'all something about Batfleck. We got this man right here. You could say, oh, he's inward battle. He's been through some stuff. You know, Robin's gone and it's Dick Grayson Robin, if you think about it. So that helps with some things. Um, you got this whole situation, him, man pine being introduced to this Superman, but Batman's been around fighting battles been been going through it um you got this the suit that's been scarred to all all hell and back so you know this man has been going through some some deep situations and you got alfred trying to coach him tell him that this man is not his, his enemy is it really true you know this superman who doesn't give a care about you know going on what's going on in africa you know he just barges over the place whenever lois lane is in trouble which is funny because he only shows up when lois lane's in trouble but when martha's in trouble He's nowhere to be found. <laughs> so, you know, your own mother disappears and you don't hear heartbeat, but you hear Lois Lane's heartbeat. The whole, the whole other thing. But let's get back to Batman. Batman is the kind of person that's ready to let, let things go if he has to. You know what I'm saying? He don't care about no Lex Luthor and his goons. He don't care about no Africans in the, in the desert. He don't care about... He does what he has to to get the job done. You know what I'm saying? We could have seconds. We could have seen it fully, but uh, that's another discussion for another time. Anyway, but I'm going to tell you right now about Ben Affleck's Batman. The one thing that he has is the determination wherever the method goes to. If he has to stop a Superman, he goes all out with Kryptonite. How do you know he doesn't have any bottom on the side, by the way? But with Kryptonite, he has to stop him. When it comes to Martha Kent, he's not he's holding back. If everyone here who's listening hopefully has played Arkham and knows that warehouse scene. It's very reminiscent of the one minute. Movies. So you know what you, you was going to come into. And the people complain that Batman kills. Come on now. Come <laughs> on. Sometimes people got to get dealt with. Sometimes you got to deal with your certain enemies and, and get them out of the way. Especially this Batman we've been waiting for to see. This angry, 20 old experienced Batman, not some origin story we've seen so many times. Uh, Christian Bale, we don't need you need to hear from you no more. We're hearing from Ben Affleck right now. 30 seconds left. Batman is that one true character we grew up with. He's the Bat God. He got prep time for everything. And we know it's real. Batman is that dude. And I'm going to just say it right now. He has smoke for Superman. Superman had nothing for him. He's ready to go. This, 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 this Kryptonian character, he was second taken out. You know what I'm saying? Got saved by his girl. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. JD was right there with it. JD, he was not scared. He was ready. He came through with it. And Sal, now you have two minutes. You have a two-minute rebuttal time, so use it wisely. You got to break down his uh, point of view and his perspective. So it's all on you. You got two minutes starting now. Okay, so you say um, he got into a fight with, uh, Superman got into a fight with Batman and he didn't bring his extra energy because he was so worried about uh, his mother in danger and he wanted to convince Batman to join him. But Batman, being the selfish character that he is, he's so worried about this alien and how he's a threat and how he feels like, you know, boo boo, I'm so sad, I'm so rich, but I, you know, he's, he's been so caught up with this whole thing I mean, how long ago did it happen? 30 plus years ago? Like, come on, man. You need to get over this whole thing that happened in Crime Alley with Joe Chill. Like, <laughs> Superman is trying to move things forward and save Martha. And this guy is worried about Martha from oh, way back when. And uh, we got to talk about uh, we got to talk about the senseless violence from Batman. It, you know, killing people. I, I know we've gotten into that for the past few years. One but more minute. It's one thing to, to brand people and to brutalize them, beat them to a bloody pulp, send them to prison, and then 
they're a target for people in there. And they're not always, um, I can imagine with the justice system in America, they're not always uh, the most guilty of people to be sentenced to death like that um, from the Batman himself. And for Batman to continuously go throughout this movie, uh, killing people and, uh, and leaving a wave of destruction behind him only to just keep going forward in this, like I said, selfish inward crusade where all he wants to do is just kill somebody just because they make him feel less of a man. How much time do I have left? 10 seconds. 10 seconds. This guy's a bitch, period. <laughs> That's it. He's a selfish coward. All right, you done. Damn. Damn, JD, did you hear all that? He oh, said, I heard it. I he heard said it. that your boy created a wave of destruction. He said Batman created waves of destruction and that he was a bitch. So what you going to do, JD? <laughs> You're going to let this man down talk Batman like that? You got two minutes. Like, you know, let us let us know. You got two minutes for a rebuttal starting now. Talking about a wave of destruction. Did you not see Metropolis after Man of Steel? <laughs> Did you not see the Wayne building in half, my brother? Come on now. You were the two men killing Lex Luthor's henchmen. Oh. And Batman's destroying a city, bro. And, and to top it all off, you, you only, you talking about Martha, when Superman's on a mountain talking to the spirit of his dad and his mom's getting kidnapped. Bro, come on, bro. That's your mom's. You're not going to go over there and go save her? You busy, you go, I got, my, I got, a, I got to sit in my uh, empty fortress of solitude and think about stuff. Oh, meanwhile, my mom's getting kidnapped. And if your mom is kidnapped by Lex Luthor, instead of fighting Batman, go save your mom, bro. Go, you were Superman. You were that strong character that, that literally is faster than a speeding bullet. You got enough time to find your mom than fighting this dude over here, bro. That's why he got that smoke. He wasn't ready for it. <laughs> so, and also he's thinking, oh, okay. You got I'm, one more minute. I can, I can really stand all these bullets. You think, you think this man is throwing all these heavy hits at you? He isn't ready for you, bro? That's why he wasn't ready for the kryptonite. You got to think smarter, man. You got to think of, you got to plan when you, ahead. That's why you're going against the prep god. You're not ready for none of that smoke, man. And then after that, talking about with the spear, here's my last point. Why not just get one of those lasso and tied up uh, uh, Doomsday and let one of them stab Doomsday, bro? You still be on the planet. <laughs> Just saying, just saying. Your world, you still be with your girl, but nah, nah, let me sacrifice myself. You got 30 seconds. Anyway, man, man, he a punk, man. I don't care about that fool, man. <laughs> man, I'm not even sure if you're talking about Sal or Superman, that last line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Like, so much animosity. I love it. I love it. Uh, so, like, you guys got one more minute to make one more final attempt right here right now so you know look uh, go as deep as you can and give me give me something more come on sal you go you up first go ahead one minute starting now uh look man uh wonder woman couldn't kill doomsday we saw that the spear was the only way to hold him down and obviously batman's not gonna hold down doomsday <laughs> so you gotta have the big dog carry the big gun and take that dude down and he did it and he did it at the cost of his own life and that wasn't the first time he saved the world. He did it again, or he did it before in Man of Steel. He put the whole team on his back. He brought the U.S. military with 30 him. 30 seconds. He cracked that dude's neck. Um, <laughs> uh, what's it called? Uh, and I have to say, uh, DCU Batman. 20 uh, seconds. You know, obviously, we don't have the Snyder Cut yet, but this character has aged horribly uh, with uh, – we have Black Lives Matter. We have police brutality. Ten seconds. And this man was just the embodiment. Uh, like, you know, we have the, the batter up drawing with the police advocating for the violence from Batman. All right, man, that's it. Your time's up. Age. Your time's horribly. up. Your time's up. All right, J.D., apparently you've aged horribly. Are you going to take that sitting down? <laughs> are you, you going to let her talk to you like that, J.D.? First off. You got, hold up, hold up. You got one minute. And it's starting now. Go. First off, how do you know Wonder Woman couldn't stop Doomsday? She stopped Ares. Don't disrespect Wonder Woman like that. Second, it only took love. It only took Batman's <laughs> kryptonite bullet to stop Doomsday. If you ain't shot that bullet, how are you gonna get there close enough with the spear? Third, you worried about some whole situation about oh Batman's position with the how we going through society. We haven't seen his position. That's a whole other topic. 
snakes in the water. That's all I'm saying. But I'm I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna let y'all ponder. Thirty on that seconds. Point. But here's the seconds. thing, man. You, it's funny how this Superman who has all, all this hope and all this power and it's a symbol for justice got beat up by my man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's hilarious that fifteen seconds. Come out a weathered, a weathered old human beat the crap out of the, the strongest man on the planet. Ten seconds. So I'm just saying, y'all, y'all know, you know what I'm saying? Dude, it's Mayweather against you know some kid, bro. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Oh my God, y'all, you guys, you guys are killing me tonight, <laughs> man, or today. I keep saying tonight. tonight. I, I usually record at night. <laughs> Recording in the middle of the day is not something that I'm used to, but it's something that I had to do for you fellas. Um, but man, this debate has been so great so far. Um, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I'm like I'm I'm really struggling with which of y'all to give it to, but luckily you have 30 seconds to give me your closing statements and try to to convince me why I should pick you. Sal, you started this whole thing. You're gonna start this final segment as well. So go ahead. You have 30 seconds closing statements starting now. The DCU Superman, Zack Snyder Superman, has shown me once and for all that uh, Superman is a much more complex character than Batman himself. Batman is just some detective fighting for one city, trying to re trying to fight this endless, uh, purposeless seconds. battle. Uh, Superman, you can explore so much. You can explore uh, religion, philosophy, uh, magic. You can explore uh, it, what bro. it means to be human. That's it. 30 seconds. That's it. That's all you had. That's all you had. I tried, I, man. You did. You did. You did. I saw you there. All right, JD, it's your turn. 30-second closing statement. Tell us why DCEU Batman is better, starting now. This is the thing, man. I'm going to speak to you. We got a character like the D you got DCU Batman, Ben Affleck, that we have so many stories you can tell. This weathered, older Batman, that stories that are just abundant that we can come from. And now we got Snyder, Zack Snyder's Justice League coming out, so we know we can get even more. We got the room on 10 the seconds. We can get Ben Affleck to come back and tell a story against Deathstroke. Who doesn't want to see that? Five you know seconds. Saying? So that's a great point for us to see. And I'm going to say right now, it, that's just, it. just wait You're on done. it. That's it. That's it. Thank you both, you gentlemen. I know that these debates aren't easy. I know that there's a time crunch, but I really feel like you guys both have brought it. You both made some wonderful points. Uh, the fact that Sal brought up the importance of DCEU Superman as a mythological uh, figure, uh, not only in the DCEU, but for the entire world, I thought that that point hit home directly. And um, the notion that Batman has to get over his own shit so we can move on into the future, that was another strong point that he did make. Although, you know, your closing statement didn't hit home as hard as it should have, you, you did pretty <laughs> yeah, well yeah. over the course of those first three rounds. Now, JD, now JD came correct. JD told you straight up, Superman is a punk. Superman ran away when the world needed him, and he only shows up when Lois Lane is in trouble. Uh, and, low, and, you know, JD does have uh, the, you know, the fact that Batman had won that fight uh, in his corner. He, he did win. An old, weathered, beaten old man beat Superman down to the point of no return. Uh, but now, JD, you did try to come at Superman and take away his sacrifice, which I can't fuck with. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> Listen, you do what it takes to win. I'm All sorry. Right, uh, hey, yo, you went for it, bro. You went for it, man. Uh, but um, Yeah, this was hard because I, I like both of them a lot. <laughs> it made me feel like what well, you're recording. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I got it in the end, after much deliberation and much thought, I got to give it to, Alizar, to Salazar. Superman has won this battle. Uh, thank you very much, Let's both go. of you guys. Y'all brought it. It was not an easy choice. Uh, and I could be wrong. I could be wrong. So uh, to you guys out there that are listening, that are watching, if you think that I am wrong, we're going to put up a poll right now, and you guys are going to get to vote and tell us your opinion. Who is better? JD's argument about DCU Batman being the GOAT, taking down Superman as though he owed him his lunch money? Or is Salazar right about how DCU Superman is a mythological figure that allows us to study so much more about who we are as individuals and as a race. Uh, so I want to thank you both, you gentlemen, for coming on. This was a great debate. Um, Sal, you got this victory. If you got anything that you want to say before we head out, this is your chance. Take it. Uh, man, 2021, let's get this Snyder Cut. Let's go see what <laughs> we got. Uh, let's go analyze this thing, baby. Let's go uh, see what more we can explore with this. I and uh, JD, that was a great debate, man, for real.
I think that that's a great final point. And I think that's something that we can all agree on. Uh, so once more, thank you, everyone. Thank you, RTSC, once more for giving us this platform to be able to do this. Uh, thank you for the audience for coming on and watching this other great debate. We got a bunch more coming along in the weeks to come. So please come back and check in. Until then, if you really like this debate, please like, the, like subscribe, and hit the bell. So the moment that a new video comes up, you will get an instant notification. Uh, with that said, why don't you guys tell people where they can find you? JD, what about you, bro? I'm uh, at Def Justice on Twitter, and you just hit me there. You got any questions, let me know. I'll All respond. Right. And please, while you're at it, check out JD's webpage and listen to some of the tracks that he's been making. This man is incredibly talented, man. Tell, tell them where they can find your website, bro. Oh, uh, DefJusticeProductions.com. Go ahead and take go. a look, and the link's in the, in the Twitter bio. Just take awesome. a look there. Awesome. I've taken a look, and there's some good shit over there. Thank so, you, sir. You know, the, the, that's the thing. The Snyder Cut movement is so filled with talented people. I'm glad that you all got a chance to come out here and, like, you know, just show people who you really are. Uh, and, Sal, where can people find you, boss, man? Uh, I'm currently no longer on Twitter, but you can go look up uh, at RTSC Files. We're working on a podcast for the – release the Snyder Cut platform to lift up the voices of uh, the people that were really there, that were really uh, pushing forward the movement and got us to get the movie. Awesome. Thank you very much for mentioning that point. And uh, I'm sure that uh, the more people get to see of that, the more they'll, 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 they'll want to see more of it. It's going to be incredible. So thank you both. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, RTSC. Mm -hmm. And before we head out, release the Snyder Cut. And thank you all. Good night or good day. Show him that shirt. Show him that shirt. <laughs>